So while I wait for some uh, brass to clean here, I figured I'd do a uh, really quick video about my reloading setup. Uh, this is my uh, Lee reloading press. It's a uh, four, um, four die tu uh, turret. I have some carbide dies in there and my uh, auto powder measure. Uh, I got the, uh, the shell holder in there. This is for 9mm. That's the only die I own at the moment. And uh, if you found this video, you're probably a lot like me when I first started. I was very nervous. Um, I didn't think it was something that I could do. It just didn't seem very, you know, safe for me to do something like this. But uh, with the rising cost of ammunition, um, I decided it would probably be worth it. So, um, so you buy your press. Um, you can get, you know, Lee, you can get um, RCBS, you can get, you know, whatever other ones out there that you want. They all pretty much work the same way. Uh, you can get a uh, sort of single stage press, which is, uh, you know, sort of tedious. Um, it's really good if you want to do sort of a few precision um, loads. Uh, so, you know, it's something that you really want to take your time with, but I wanted something a little more quicker. Um, I don't really shoot, like, you know, uh, competition type stuff. I don't need match great bullets. I just need cheap ammo. Uh, we have bullets, uh, 9mm full metal jacket, Winchester. I probably shouldn't have bought these. I mean, they're probably high quality and stuff, but they're sort of bringing the, the cost of my components up a bit. Paying about 18 cents a round, uh, per round for this stuff. Um, so it's not terrible. It's a lot cheaper than, say, Winchester White Box. Um, but, you know, there's a lot. Uh, a lot of, there's a couple cheaper alternatives out there for bullets, um, berries and uh, Rainier lead safe to, to you know, be exact. Have the pistol primers. Uh, these were on sale at Gander for about three bucks per hundred. Um, I wish I had gotten more of them. Uh, I kind of went back to buy more of them, but the sale had ended, so they actually had to bring all the stuff back for me because I, I didn't want to pay four dollars per pack. Um, and then we have, uh, yep, that's about it. Um, then we have the powder here. Uh, we're using, let's see here. We're using uh, Universal Clays. The bug. I don't know, Nats seem to really like gunpowder. I don't know what that's all about. But we have uh, Universal Clays um, gunpowder. This is the eight pound container of it. Um, you can buy this stuff online, but you have to pay a $25 hazmat fee. Same with the primers. Um, so if you have a local place that you can get this from, uh, that would be ideal. But if you don't, in fact, I had to drive quite a ways to get this because I don't have any places around me that sells gunpowder or bullets or primers. So I got that. And also I have some 30 out 6 um, powder for my grand I'm going to be using. I don't know if you can see that. But anyway. Uh, yeah, like I said, I have some uh, brass cleaning right now in my tumbler. Uh, I'm using a walnut and corn cob mixture. Some people say you don't have to do this. This is just to, you know, make your brass shiny and look nice. But personally, I don't like the idea of running dirty um, shells through my uh, my reloading press. I figure, you know, if I can get that clean, it you know help keep the whole system clean in general. Okay, so hopefully you can see this angle. Um, I'm going to do a few rounds here. Not too many. Uh, first thing you need is going to be your primer. So we have the CCI small pistol primers that we're going to be using, uh, number 500. Um, no reason really. Um, CCI is a good company though. I like a lot of their ammo. So you can find these, but you know, other primers work fine. Uh, Federal makes some. Um, Wolf, I know, makes some. Uh, a lot cheaper actually. Uh, compared to these other things. I might switch to those. Uh, you know, there's been mixed reviews on them, but it seems for the majority um, the wolf primers work just fine. So, I don't have anything to put these primers in. A lot of these, you know, they have cases and stuff like that. I should probably get one, and I probably will um, after a certain point, but for right now, I just, uh, I'm going to make five rounds. I'm trying to knock the camera over. Okay. So, uh, you know, we have our five shells. Um, they still have primers in them. Um, pretty much all I've done is clean them. So, uh, now when you're doing rifle, you have to resize it. And there's a little bit more work that goes into it, and that's why I'm starting with pistol because um, since I'm sort of new to reloading, um, you know, it's uh, seems safe to start with a lot of them. So, uh, first I want to insert this. Um, this is my primer. Cedar. 
So I have that in there. Um, the first die it's going to go through is the resizing and depriming die. So we run that up in. I don't know if you saw it, but it pushes the primer right out. And so, away. Um, next what we want to do is uh, add the primers. Um, and usually I kind of dump these out into a tray, like sort of a cover for my lead uh, die tray. It makes it a little bit easier. But for now I'm just going to do them out of the case by hand. So I dump that in my hand, place it, anvil side up, and then when I run it down, I run it all the way down so that it keeps the new primer. So there we go, and as you can see it turned the turret, um, and the uh, primer will have heated. So next we run it up in, and that measures powder. Now, to start out with, I'm going to actually measure um, and see how much powder we're using here. So, you know, uh, one of the things you want to get when you're reloading is a reloading manual. I have a couple. Um, right now I'm just using the complete reloading manual for 9mm Luger. Um, you know, fire beware, these uh, sort of single, one book, one caliber things can be um, out of date. But, uh, you know, I've already tested these rounds and they work fine. So we're going to go, I'm using 115 grain bullets. Um, I'm not using the Horn but, you know, they're pretty much all the same, so it doesn't really matter. So we got Clay's Universal. Um, I'm going to try to hold that sideways. Clay's Universal. Uh, we got, you know, four grains is the, uh, the minimum we want to use, and 4.5 is the maximum. So, now that I have my thing on there, I can tear. That'll set us to zero, so it doesn't count in the weight of the uh, tray there. And measuring it, 4.3. Okay, there you go. So that's what I'm looking for. Um, now, you don't have to do this. I, I, I check the uh, the weight of my powder every about 10 rounds or so. Maybe a little bit more, maybe every 15 rounds. Um, so, you know, I mean, that's a safety thing for me. If you don't want to do it, you know, that's sort of your call. Um, but I try to be as safe as possible. So, definitely something I so run it up again. And, you know, every time you do that, you sort of want to visually check your inside your shell. You kind of get an idea of where um, it, sh it should be, you know, as far as it looks. That's something you develop over time. Um, I've only been doing this for a few days. And I've already developed sort of an idea of what it should look like. So, um, definitely something you want to keep an eye out each time you do a round. <coughs> now, next up, we're going to add the bullet. I know, I'm very unorganized right now. I usually flop it in this, but just to show you. So uh, a lot of people, you know, they just kind of set the bullet on top and then run it up through. But for whatever reason, I have a hard time doing that. It tends to tip over and it just takes way too long to set on there. It could be because I'm using uh, hollow base bullets. I don't know if you can see that, but it's not flat. Maybe you have more luck with the flat. But so I pretty much just kind of put it on there and hold it, just kind of guide it into it. And there you go. Um, just watch your fingers, don't pinch them. If you go that route. So we come down, and as you can see, the bullet is seated and. Uh, the it turns and now we have our crimping die. So I run it up again and it's crimped, at least I think so. I don't really know what a crimp looks like or what it does, but hey, it uh, sounded good, so I definitely do it. I definitely feel like something is happening. So, and like I said, I've already tested these rounds and they, they fire fine. Um, so there you go, there's one round. There's the, the uh, primer and that's one round. So uh, the next four I'm just kind of going to kind of do real quick here. So you can kind of see what it looks like when I'm doing it. There's a certain rhythm to it, I guess you can say. There's a lot of people say about reloading. Um, so once you get into that rhythm, you'll find out what's going to kind of work the best for you. Um, so you can start doing it at a quicker pace. Kind of so anyway, you can D prime, add the primer, down, the primer, feeding, Seating, again, there it goes, okay. Not sure what happened, maybe I didn't run it up all the way through. So anyway, we got it primed, powder, down, looks good, looks about right, bullets, down, print, right. Next, up, and prime. Primer, down, 
Ammo. The primal thing fell out, of course. Up. <laughs> Down. Crimp. Yeah. Pull it. Right here. Okay, uh, next round, the shell in, D prime, primer, D, up, powder, round, pull it, round, prime. Now, up, D prime, Primer, powder, down, turn, bullet. There you go. And there you have it. There's uh, five rounds and uh, not much time. I mean, of course, it goes faster when I have all the primers set out and uh, the bullets ready and when I'm not, you know, sort of narrating as I go. There's five rounds. Now, uh, another thing you want to check for is the length. So you grab your calipers and go at it. And these are uh, Wickley. Um, works very well and not too expensive, so it's a good thing in my book. <coughs> so, zoom out here a little bit. Don't mind the stair treads, I'm doing a little home improvement project. <coughs> anyway, let's check the book and your reloading manual will tell you the maximum length that uh, these are supposed to be. So maximum length is 1.69. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry, 1.169. <clears throat> so we're going to measure it. So we get this on here. So we sort of put that between the two things there. And we're hitting 1.161. So uh, that's definitely under the maximum. And it's pretty close to the maximum. That's kind of where I like them. So <clears throat> I also uh, measure those uh, every 10 rounds as well. I try to you know, make sure that we're just getting some consistency here and that we're not, you know, because you don't want to make a bunch of rounds that are over. Um, so anyway, um, things to look out for, make sure you're not, you know, double charging. Um, that's when it drops twice the amount. Um, with this, it would be easy to tell because it would be overflowing the case, but with things like, uh, you know, uh, rifle uh, ammunition, it's something that um, can happen. And you want to make sure it doesn't, you know, you don't get, you want to make sure you want to, you get powder in there at all. I mean, you can make uh, squib rounds, which are pretty much just uh, primer, shell, and bullet with no powder. Um, and those will get lodged in your um, barrel, can cause problems, especially if you're shooting fast and you shoot one right after it, after it's lodged in your barrel. I'm sure you've all seen Looney Tune cartoons. Um, there you have it. Sort of a quick tour of my reloading setup. Um, and they work great. I test them. And they fire fine, I didn't blow up. So there's really not, well, I mean, you should always be aware, but, um, you know, it's not really something you should be afraid of doing. Uh, just be careful, take your time, uh, and just, you know, double check your work, especially at first when you're first starting. And uh, soon you'll be shooting much cheaper ammo. Uh, any questions, feel free to ask, and I'll try to answer them as best I can. Uh, there you go. Thanks for watching.